This episode of the Lead Machine Growth Show is brought to you by Lead Machine, the step-by-step tech easy system for getting leads online. Are you ready to start attracting your ideal audience right away? Join the five-day Lead Magnet Magic Challenge today at www.getleadmachine.com forward slash magic. Say goodbye forever to struggling with lead magnets and say hello to getting your offer seen by your ideal clients. Welcome to the Lead Machine Growth Show, where you will discover how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream. Paul Guyen, the mastermind behind the Lead Machine, introduces you to trailblazers who inspire you to implement life-changing solutions and systems you can model to nurture your leads and get your offers seen by your ideal clients who will invest in themselves and you. Be sure you visit our website at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, tune in and get ready to transform your vision into reality. Welcome to the Lead Machine Growth Show, where passion meets entrepreneurship and dreams become reality. I'm Paul Guyon, your Lead Machine coach, host, international best-selling author, and tech marketing and operations expert. I'm passionate about my God-given mission to help entrepreneurs, coaches, and solopreneurs tackle their tech, master their message, and design their dream. Are you ready to unleash your full potential and achieve extraordinary results? Then you're in the right place. We'll dive deep into the strategies, insights, and stories of trailblazers like my guest, who've overcome the obstacles of technology, marketing, and mindset, and are making a huge impact on their audience and customers. So buckle up, get ready for an exhilarating ride filled with inspiration, motivation, and practical advice. Whether you're just starting out or looking to take your business to your next level, let's get this conversation started and turn your dreams into reality. And thanks for tuning in. In this episode, we're discussing designing the life and business of your dreams with the dream business coach himself, Jim Palmer. I first heard of Jim when I was a marketing chair for a local nonprofit and food rescue operation. I was looking for information on creating a newsletter to build awareness for and support for this new nonprofit. I heard an interview hosted by Troy White of this guy called the newsletter guru, Jim Palmer. I got his book, The Magic of Newsletter Marketing, and built a successful newsletter. The rest is history. Food Rescue took off, and I've been following Jim ever since. Over the years, I came to meet Jim in person, first in San Diego at the Think and Grow Rich Summit in 2013, which was a blast. Uh, He was one of our 20 speakers, believe it or not. There were 20 of them, three days. And again, in 2015 in Chicago at the Ultimate Mastermind Summit, he was a speaker also. And I was also a member of his private mastermind group. I think it was called Ride the Lightning Mastermind, if I recall. Uh, I was honored to introduce Jim at his Dream Business Academy event in Las Vegas. And uh, Jim is a fabulous marketer. He's seen everywhere online. He volunteers his time, talent, and treasure for the glory of God. And he's a heck of a nice guy. Before we dive in, though, let me give Jim a proper introduction. Jim is the founder and creator of the Dream Business Mastermind and Coaching Program, creator of the Dream Business Academy, and host of the Dream Business Radio, a weekly podcast based on Jim's unique brand of smart marketing and dream business building strategies. 548 episodes, I believe. His current business ventures include No Hassle Newsletters, Success Advantage Publishing, and How to Sell from the Stage Like a Pro. Jim is also the developer of the cash flow conversion code, as well as an acclaimed author of many books, not several books. In 2016, after raising four kids and leading a practical and predictable life, Jim and Stephanie sold their home in suburban Philadelphia and now live full time, travel in their yacht called the floating home. That might have changed a little bit. We're going to get into that in a minute. While traveling up and down the East Coast, Jim is busy building his legacy by teaching more entrepreneurs and small business owners how to turn an ordinary business into a dream business so they too can live their dream lifestyle. Jim, I'm so honored to have you here. Welcome to the show. 
Mr. Guyon, it's great to see you again. I remember <laughs> San Diego so well. <laughs> you know, I mean, you when you invited me, you and your uh, partner that put it on, you you invited me and you you asked me to do the keynote. And I looked at the other speakers. I go, what in the heck? Why do you want me to do the keynote? <laughs> there are some big time players on that stage. It was a real honor to go out there. And then, yeah, for you came to my event, Dream Business Academy. And um, yeah, it's great to catch up with you again. Yeah, that was a great event. It was, it was, uh, it almost didn't happen. In fact, it got canceled once and we were three feet from gold mm -hmm. and, uh, and the, 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 the people who were, were, were backing at the, the Napoleon Hill foundation were, were, were scared. Yeah. And uh, so we canceled it and we, we, we reimagined it and got rid of some baggage and held it in, uh, in April of 2013. And yeah, that was amazing. I remember your books didn't show up on day one and you, you, were, you were frazzled. I picked you up at the airport and you said, Hey, are my books here yet? Uh, yeah. So I had my whole author's table, which had nothing on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Jim, how did you reach this point in your life and business? What were some of the major turning points and setbacks that you had to overcome? I know there's some pretty pretty scary things that happened uh, uh, early on, especially for a period of about 18 months. Can you, yeah, can you well, take, take us back to the beginning? I, I thought this wasn't a two hour podcast, but I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> so, um, you know, I lost my job. At, at, I was 41 years old. I was VP of marketing. I lost my job. I thought, well, I got four teenagers at home. So even though I had entrepreneurial um, tendencies and uh, th maybe the entrepreneurial itch, that wasn't a time to do it. But um 18 months I was unemployed, Paul, and that really wrecked my confidence and certainly wrecked our cash position. And one year into that, I was diagnosed with cancer and that really brought me to my knees. And um, God told me to go ahead and become an entrepreneur. And I'm like, are you serious? I have no money. I'm in debt. <laughs> you want me to start a business now? Well, I did. <laughs> and um, you know, about five years after I launched my first business, we were doing about 300,000, but I was really a very much a small business owner doing business locally, creating, writing and designing newsletters for companies. And then I met um, Mike Capuzzi, who was one of the uh, Glazer Kennedy IBAs. Yeah. And he introduced, that's when I learned all about Dan Kennedy and that whole world. I started discovering internet marketing and learned a lot. I just went into massive growth mode and learning mode. And I then created my first of, I think, six different online businesses, No Hassle Newsletters. And um, I followed that up with Concierge Print Mail and Demand, No Hassle Social Media, Success Advantage Publishing, Custom Article Generator. I think I'm leaving one out. And then in 2009, I'm still traveling, doing these events. And and people started asking me how I was doing all this. And I remember Dan Kennedy very early on said, if anybody asks you how you're doing this, you may have, you may be a coach. <laughs> and to me, it, I, I'm not a coach. I didn't go to coach university. So I started uh -huh. my coaching program in 2009. And we've been doing that. That's my main you know, source of income today. We've been doing it ever since. And as you said, Stephanie and I, we spent five years going up and down the coast, we traveled 12,458 miles in our in our beautiful boat. And um, right wow. now we're temporarily landlocked, taking care of some family matters and some uh, kind of family stuff. That's pretty difficult when you're traveling in a boat <laughs> where oh, yeah. you, know, you need five feet of water to go anywhere. So, so we're, we're on a one year little break and, um, and then we're going to figure okay. out our, our next big adventure from there. Right. Okay. It doesn't involve a balloon, does it? It does not involve a balloon. The, the world <laughs> okay. will soon find out. We're we're <laughs> going to pull the trigger here this week, most likely. So, <laughs> oh, okay, yep, okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, you've. I'm not going to ask you follow up questions on the floating home story because I want to get into okay uh, what we're here for. And you talked about the importance of creating a dream business. Yes, and that's that's what my audience wants to know, and they that's what they're building, and and so. And this is important to me is aligning your your values and your goals and your morals with your dream business. Mm -hmm. And what steps can people take to identify their dream business and how can they work towards making that real? In um 
So it was about 2014, Paul, when um, we bought our first boat, which is like a 30 foot boat. It was a lifelong dream that I finally fulfilled. And I just loved boating. And I said, I don't want to, you know, I, I, if I look back on the last, say, 10, 11 years, I was the proverbial 80 hour a week entrepreneur, which was fine. I had, I had to make up a lot of lost ground financially and just growing and Two girls went to college, then two girls got married within 12 months of each other. So, you know, we had some uh, pr pretty big hurdles, but everything kind of fell into place. And I said, you know what? I don't want the next 10 years to look like the previous from the standpoint of effort. At that point, I'm now 51 or 52, and I'm still pretty young at heart, but, you know, you, you, the body does slow down a little bit. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> But I said, and I just had a conversation with myself and obviously through a lot of prayer and stuff said, well, if I'm going to have a business, why don't I create my dream business? And step one was to figure out what do I want that to look like? So I stopped working on Friday so I could have a three day weekend and be in my boat. And then I, six months later, I liked that so much. I said, I wonder if I can stop working Monday and just work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. In other words, instead of being fairly busy on five days, if I only coach my clients Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, would those be very busy days? But then I would be off for four days. Pretty scary to do. But I figured out if I can, if I can be busy those four days and if I had the right mix of clients and no hassle newsletters, the printing business, the publishing business, that's still going, I could yeah. do it. So I pulled the trigger and, and did that, Paul. The other, the other parts of a dream business, from my perspective, it um, has multiple streams of revenue, and and that's actually the way most people earn a very healthy living. You can't just push one boulder up a hill. It's usually a combination of different revenue streams. Um, it's fun to operate. It's always firing on all cylinders. It runs in any economy. And then it, it also provides an asset for worry-free retirement because I had no desire to wear an orange apron at 90 years old, being a greeter at Walmart. So I had to, <laughs> I had to figure out, you know, how, how am I going to fully fund a, a nice retirement? And, um, so over, over really the, over the last uh, eight years, we've done that. We've been, God has blessed us immensely. You know, we're, we're debt-free. We're, pretty much secure for retirement but i don't plan on stopping because because it, you know like you have your god-given skills and talents god has blessed me with skills and, and he made it clear i don't you three days a week is fine but you're not going to slow down <laughs> so yeah whatever we're doing i will find a way to keep working i have about 25 coaching clients right now that's a very good number to have um if maybe in, in two years I turned 65 and in, in about a you know month or more as you and I are doing the recording. And um, so I got my little Medicare card, which officially says, God, you're old, but you know, I'm still <laughs> I'm still pretty young at heart, Paul, like you. And yeah. um, but you know, at some point I kind of my the rest of my dream business, um, which probably I, I want to amend my list, Paul, because I left out the most important thing. A dream business generates enough revenue to provide you with the income you need to live the life that you want to live. And I wanted to live where I work three days a week. I want to travel on that 50 foot boat up and down the coast. And that's what we're able to do. Um, so that's the whole dream business part. And now as I work with my, with my clients in the dream business mastermind, I help them figure out what are the keys to growing their business in a significant way um, a lot of that involves being able to charge more for your goods and services. A lot of people have money hangups. I certainly did early on. So um, that's probably a very long answer, but that's kind of the dream business element. Okay. What about your, what about the values? You've talked about God given talents and treasures and being blessed and prayer and whatnot. How about the, I'm, I'm always interested in seeing uh, with the businesses that I've worked with uh, the bigger ones, when they get to a certain point, you know, they start out and, and every it's kumbaya and everyone loves every, everyone yep. and and they and they treat everyone uh, a certain way. They treat their clients and their vendors and their employees. Uh, and they really it's a real it's a family. And then they get to a certain point and then they, they bring a new new uh, layer of management basically is what happens. Right. And then it, it, it turns into nobody gives nobody cares. Right. Uh, you start you start losing losing employees, vendors, clients. And so that those initial values that were there are lost. And so how do you protect that? And you, um, I know you're, you're doing something with your legacy. How do you protect that? So that as you grow, you can keep that. As yeah. So I want to, to your, don't let me forget the legacy part, but what I, I yeah. learned a long time ago when I, you know, early on in my faith walk that um, it doesn't matter 
if you're in front of one person, two people, or you're sitting by yourself, you are always playing to an audience of one. God knows everything. He sees everything. He knows the way you're treating your customers. You know, if somebody, you order something and, and two come in a box instead of one, do you just, oh, cool. Or do you call the people and say, hey, you know, I got shipped one over, um, you know, yeah. things like that. So I, I always, I've always believed in operating with full integrity. Um, the other thing is, I practice something in my own business. This is my term, but it's also based on what I just shared. I practice something for years called no ripple effect. So if something doesn't go uh -huh. right, you know, there's a customer that just isn't fitting right. I just had it, you know, actually a short time ago where a customer was kind of not working out and, um, you know, clients that work with me make a, a commitment for a certain period of time. And I said, you know what, we're just, we're just going to end this, but and I could have, for what had happened, I, I won't get into it, but for what, what happened, I could have like read them the riot act, like this, that, and the other thing. And I just didn't do it. First of all, let's just agree to part company. I wish you all the success in the world. Go, go do the way that you want to do it. <laughs> you know, I, I, it was, it was a little bit of um, taking it. I was taken advantage of a little bit, but you know what, Paul, that's okay. I, I learned an awful lot about forgiveness also, which is forgggiveness forgiving somebody else is way more important for you than it is for them because <laughs> you know right. i will tell you on my morning walks for at least a couple of days i'm like son of a b right <laughs> you know just reviewing right. the situation but you know what i'm better off being extricated from that i handled it with class in my opinion i forgave the person even though they crapped where it's, they shouldn't have crapped i'll leave it at that and and yeah. i'm just going to move on you know, you're yeah. not meant to do business with everybody. And you know, nobody gets to join my program without it. I, nobody gets on my podcast without an interview. Nobody comes into my mastermind without an interview. And once in a while, somebody will will fly under the radar. You know, you're being a, yeah. you're a podcast host. So you see one sheets and people, oh, I'd be a great guest. And you know pretty quickly if somebody who's a very, very successful person talks about, yeah, I can't afford to get my lawnmower fixed. So there's some there's a there's the public image, and then there's really what's going on. And sometimes that happens. But um, you know, the legacy part, um, a good friend of mine um, is, was actually a legacy member of, of my mastermind, Dave, Dr. David Phelps. I believe you know David. He's yeah, the, I know David. The Freedom Founders. And, um, yeah. and so I interviewed him two years ago, Paul, and his latest book was about um, investments, the five best investments you can make. And some of them were financial, but so I'm getting ready to interview him. So I'm kind of skimming through the book. And, and I think investment number four was invest in your legacy. And I'm like, well, people can't see me, but the hair on my face is now white, you know, <laughs> thanks. I'm still <laughs> fairly brown up top. But anyway, I'm like, hmm. you know, legacy. And it just became really important to me as I as I approach the, you know, the glide path to the exit ramp, so to speak. Um I th I thought, boy, I, I don't maybe I should slow down a little bit. And again, that's when I had a real conversation with the Lord. And he said, No, you're I don't want you slowing down now. I said, I want you to, I kind of felt he wanted me to, I want you to help more people with, with the gifts you've been blessed with. And I said, well, I figured out if I'm going to do that and I still don't, I don't want to work more than three days a week. I love my lifestyle. I figured, wait a minute. The thing that brought me to this little consternation or problem was a book, David's book. And I've written a lot of good books. So I figured out a way, um, I figured out a way to offer people my books in digital format for free. You know, Amazon mm -hmm. doesn't let you set them at zero, but there's a way. I'm not going to share it here because it's a little proprietary. But the, I, all my books are free on Digi on Amazon. They're free on Barnes and Noble and in the iBook store. So anybody, any entrepreneur can get all of all of my books downloaded and get quite an education for free, which which I love. And I don't get any reports from Barnes and Noble or the iBook store, but I know I, we're well over forty thousand books downloaded through the through Amazon, which excites wow. me. Right. And in, in those books, uh, you know, as a marketer, those books are designed as lead magnets and they, they 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 come back to you. So but just you're you're doing the good well. And they're still coming back to you because because what you teach, Jim, is is golden and giving it away for free is 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 very generous. And uh, but, you know, it's going to come back to you in spades when you when you bless other people, those blessings come back tenfold. And God, yeah, I did God some. Just... I did something about five years ago. You might remember it was called Serve First. Yeah, um, how to live a prosperous life. And again, that was God inspired that because um, right about that time, I was trying to figure out 
my whole dream business and dream lifestyle, uh, I was wondering why why I've been so blessed and and I saw this kind of uh, how, how much to go in here, but I saw this kind of like all God was replaying almost almost like you see your life flash before your eyes. It wasn't like that, but I was re, he was recalling over a few days all these things that I've done, people we've helped, etc. And um, I, I took that as a sign. I I I approve and appreciate what you're doing, and so I bless you in return. And some of those things, you know, on a personal level, also translated to business. I totally believe in serving first. I call it serve first, serve often, and keep serving. And if you serve mm-hmm. enough people, it's kind of like, uh, let's see, was it Zig Ziglar who said the way to get anything you want is to help enough people get what they want? I believe that was right. Zig, right? Yeah. And so for me, it's like serve, serve, serve. So, you know, when we um. When we got off the boat last July, um, you know, it's funny when when you're not in the engine room planning your routes and doing all kinds of maintenance and stuff. I have a lot of time on my hands, so I started <laughs> writing. I've written five ebooks. It'll be six by the time this interview comes out, and it's all great content. It's all free, and you're right, Paul. It it is a way to serve an audience, but it's also these reports are bringing new clients to me. That's kind of yeah. the benefit. Right. And um, so it's interesting that some people think internet marketing or that kind of marketing is, hey, I've developed this 10 point strategy. I'm going to share point one with you. And then if you want the good stuff, you got to pay me $5,000. <laughs> you know, right. there's that whole yeah. mentality. I believe if you just serve, 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 you're, it, you are going to, it's going to be reciprocal. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I remember when you reached out to me and said, hey, Paul, what do you think about this? And I, I, I remember that I said, I love it. Go ahead. Go for it. Yeah, and, uh, I wanted I someone that who I understand, you know, and have a relationship with like, on a Christian level, because I mean, it really, it really involves, you know, serve first, it's not just serving your gifts and talents, but in, in your money, which was a yeah. hard, it's a hard concept for a lot of people, you know, talking about tithing and things like that. And yeah. um, it, it, not to give away the whole punchline, but, you know, you know, I'm part of Bible studies and this, that, and the other thing, but it was Dan Kennedy's book, Wealth Attraction, No BS Wealth Attraction, which he talked about this guy named Foster Hibbard who interviewed and studied millionaires and billionaires. And he said, they all have so many things that they do differently, but every one of them to a person did the same thing. They lived on 80%, they donated 10% and they saved 10%. And it was interesting. I actually sent a copy and, and wrote Dan a letter. I said, it's so interesting, no matter, you know, whatever, spiritual training I have or, or whatever, <laughs> you're the one that got me to go down that road, which is kind of funny. Business well, you coach. Can't out, you can't out give God. No, that's right. Which is yeah. a very, very good lesson in in and of itself. Yeah. You told me that in, uh, when I picked you up from the airport in 2013. Yeah. I believe that that's one of the things you, you, we were talking about that. I was a little nervous to put it out, to be honest with you. I'm like, I'm a business coach. I, I talk marketing, you know, but I, I obeyed because God has a way of, I call it, he taps you on the shoulder. And if you ignore him, you get a two by four across the head. And that's usually <laughs> a, a, a little less pleasant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are on a podcast and uh, you've spoken about the power of podcasting as a marketing tool. Mm-hmm. Uh, now with 548, 40, you know, plus yep. uh, episodes and counting, how can entrepreneurs use podcasting to grow their business and how can they be seen everywhere? What are the best practices for launching and promoting that podcast and, and running it? I know you're doing some really cool things with. Yeah. Uh, with what's interesting um, is there, you know, when you, the term avatar, where you describe who your, who your perfect target customer is, right. It, you uh-huh. know, they could be male, female, 35 to 55 kids, home, whatever it is, you come up with your avatar and there, and then you could figure out, okay, you know, through some um, database, you could say, wow, there's like 50,000 people that fit my profile, my perfect target customer. And of those 50,000 people that have all these things in common, I'm telling you the thing they don't have in common is the way they consume information or content. Some yeah. people like to read a book. And if they read a book, some people are okay with a Kindle. Some people like reading a PDF or scrolling on their phone. Some people like me prefer to hold a real book put a bookmark in it and come back. Some people like audiobooks. I think I just named four ways that you can read a book or consume a book. Um, and, and podcasting and video, uh, blog posting, 
all these different things, all the, or platforms, not things, all these different platforms are the way that you can get your message out seemingly to the same avatar, but each avatar consumes content in a different way. For me, I'm a YouTube guy. Uh, you know, I learned yeah. how to do so many things on my boat. You know, one of our engines broke down. We were actually in the ocean. So I, I kind of found a place where I, it wasn't that rough. And I did a little, oh, I need to change the, the fuel filter. And I saw how they did it. I mean, YouTube is crazy good, right? <laughs> yeah. So some people do that. So I created the Dream Business YouTube channel. What I'm doing with my podcast, which I started, you know, almost 11 years ago, as an audio only, obviously, but, you know, video is big. And so about a year, year, year and a half ago, I started doing a live version of my podcast Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. I broadcast it simultaneously into Facebook, into my Facebook group called Build Your Dream Business Now. I broadcast it into LinkedIn, and then it also goes to my YouTube channel. And, and so there's an audience there. And then the, the bigger audience listens to it on replay. I can tell that. But then, Paul, I take the audio from that interview and I tr tr make it one of my regular audio podcasts and just republish it, um, republish it about um, four weeks later. So my guests kind of get a double a double hit in front ah. of in front of my audience. But I'm also repurposing content. Because nobody's going to remember four months. I can't remember four days ago, let alone four weeks ago. So <laughs> yeah. repurposing content is a, is a very good thing. Awesome. I'd like to know about the tech that you use to do all that. I well, it's a it's a simple. Well, it's called Streamyard, Paul. Streamyard, I mean, yeah. when I started doing it, um, Zoom. You can broadcast on Zoom, or you can record and put it out, or you could stream on Zoom into Facebook. But Streamyard. Yeah allows you to broadcast live on multiple platforms. And yeah. then you obviously get a recording and you can download both video recording and audio. So it's super easy to slap on the bumpers and, and send it to my guy to publish. Um, uh -huh. So StreamYard is, is the way to go. I think it's like $20 or $25 a month. It's not, it's, it's tremendous tech for, for a very inexpensive price. Right. Yeah, I just signed up for it the the other day and did a test recording last night because I'm interested in doing that. And, and before in the uh, in the green room before we started, we talked about Paul. How come you're not doing a video podcast? So yeah, that's coming. That's it's coming up. Coming. You up. know, with with Streamyard, you can have um, what's called banners. Like you can have something pop up. They got to be positioned just right. Um, you know, so if you were, for example, watch me at three o'clock when when we're doing this or at any time. Um, when I talk about my ebook, so it's generally got my dream business radio logo up there, but then I created another one, uh, an, what's called a, you know, a, an overlay. Uh, uh -huh. So the dream business radio logo is in the same place, but up here, I put a picture of my ebook and the URL. So just by a click of a button, I can make that come up and talk about it for 10, 20 seconds and then make it go away. It's very powerful. And you actually, you actually see people's con or comments live. Uh, and then you can show those. So if, if someone says, oh, hey, Jim, and hey, Paul, I can just hit yeah. that and that will show up on the screen. Let it be there for five, 10 seconds, and then I'll just take it down. So it's really, it's very easy to use. It's not complicated, but it, it, it seemingly gives you like your own studio, for heaven's sakes. Well, yeah, it's like a live broadcast studio is what it is. And that's uh, exactly. It's amazing. And talking about that, you teach about the million dollar platform. Yeah, and I know I, I notice you are um, you are seen everywhere, like we just talked about. What tips would you have someone for starting out who doesn't have the team, the tech team, the tech and the team to pull out? We, uh, Streamyard is one of the things uh, you can do, but how how do you get the team together to pull this off? Yeah, you know, back when we were together in like 2012, the 13 that time frame, I had yeah. 17 virtual assistants, and um, my life for the last five or six years, I'm down to maybe half a dozen, but I interact with like three. The rest are writers for no hassle newsletters, etc. Um, I'm not a tech person. I, I literally, if you said, "Can you broadcast an email, Jim?" I don't have the faintest clue how to do it. I can write a killer email. I'll send it to somebody on my team and said, "I want this to go out tomorrow at 8 a.m." That's how that works. Um, I'm sure it's not complicated. I think we use Active Campaign for my company. I'm sure it's uh -huh. not complicated, but I also there's a there's a broader principle about why I don't do that and why I have a team because if you can pay somebody 
$20 an hour, $30 an hour to do something like that, but you're doing it. That means you're worth $25 an hour, right? So yeah. I would rather be, you know, with the time that I, that I have, I would rather be working with my clients where I'm worth far more than that. Um, it, to me, it's, it's, um, and I think, you know, as far as the podcasting, you could probably speak to this, you know, working with, with your team, there's some kind of software where you load up an episode and boom, it puts it out everywhere. It's not like yeah. you got to go to 22 different platforms. Um, <clears throat> I think it's called Buzzsprout or something like that. But so I know enough to be dangerous, but I don't do any of that. I, I, it's called, I, it, it's a principle I call staying in your lane. I stay in my lane. I stay in my lane as far as a marketer. I stay in my lane as far as what I share on social media. I don't share anything about Supreme Court or election. I don't go. I don't go into that stuff. People don't want to. There's enough news sources and opinions. They don't want to hear it from Jim Palmer. What they do follow me for is is wisdom, inspiration, and and marketing strategies. And so I stay in that lane. And as far as my team and what I do, could I just maybe jump on and do this? Well, I probably could, but I'd rather go do something else if I'm not with a client. So I'm happy to. Plus, I'm also I'm also you know. Um, in, I'm employing a few people. I use that term loosely because they're, you know, subcontractors, but I'm yeah. also, you know, helping to keep the whole, the whole boat afloat, so to speak. Right. As the, um, the business landscape has been changing over the years and podcasting is, is super, super, super uh, popular. Uh, there's a growing popularity of AI. What should business owners do to prepare for that? Um, well, I'm a little outside my wheelhouse or above my pay grade when I say this. I'm sure there's many things um, that AI can do. I've sampled it. I've tried it. It's it will it'll write an amazing blog post for you. I understand it can write like sales copy. I uh -huh. do. I, I'm going to sound like a little bit of a dinosaur here, so I apologize. I have a little bit of an issue. Um, you know, there's there's people that you see even on Facebook and other things. Hey, if you're a coach, you here buy my treasure trove of articles, blog posts, etc. So wait, you're going to go out there and present yourself as an expert who can help people, but what you're using is all somebody, some stuff other people have written. Yeah, I mean, if it's legal and moral and ethical, I guess go have at it. I, I my whole deal is if if you're going to pay somebody you know, like a business coach to help you create a six or seven figure business, you better have done it yourself. That's just me. Okay. So AI yeah. <laughs> is, is very helpful. I was brainstorming with one of my new clients, some, some potential book titles and stuff. And I just jumped into AI to see, and I was amazed. It's pretty, <laughs> if nothing, if nothing else, it was, it was like the spark that I needed to create something even better than that. My right. advice, and again, I'm going to sound, you know, like, oh, what, what's wrong with the horse? We don't need a motor car, I'm not that guy. But if you're just going to use AI to create all your content and things like that, I there's a little bit of a disconnect for me there. Gotcha. So leverage it for ideas, but don't don't rely on it for your platform. That's my. That's just the way I'm going to approach it. Right. It's it's a yeah. great idea generator. Um, there's, I, I help my clients come up with like an acronym. So you're the creator of something it's given me ideas for acronyms. I mean, I mean, it's really good for solving blank page syndrome, if you will, you know, yeah, um, yeah. but it, it, to, to me, and again, yeah, I don't, I don't want to keep saying it, it you know, Jim, get with the times, but to me, it's a little bit like, um, uh, plagiarism or something like that. I know it's not, yeah. but I guess if somebody typed in the exact same phrase I did and now two blog posts come up, if you just use them, I, I don't know. I guess that, I, I don't know how, I think it's got a few, a few issues and who, who knows where it's going to go. But um, yeah. for me, I think it's a, it's a useful tool to help me in a, in a limited capacity. That's how I plan to use it. Gotcha. Okay. Well, we're almost ready to wrap you wrap up with this. What words of encouragement would you have with someone uh, who's, who's uh, in, in today's environment, to persevere, persevere through the challenges ahead, and uh, you know, just starting out with their their this entrepreneurial uh, dream business. What what words of encouragement would you give them? You, you can't have one foot on the one foot on the dock and one foot in the boat. If you'll let me use my nautical language, there, <laughs> you know, there's no way in the world you're going to go out in that boat and, and either go fast or just go explore. If one foot's on the dock, you, you have to be one of the greatest um, impediments to growing a dream business is when you say to yourself, 
I really would like to have that. My desire is off the chart strong. I'm committed to it, but I don't want to risk what I have now. I refuse to put my house on the bank note. I refuse to borrow money. I refuse to do all this stuff. I'm going to work really hard to have my dream business, but I'm not going to risk my current lifestyle. That's fantasy land as far as I can, if I, as far as I can tell. I mean, how in the world do you do that? I don't know. I've, I've studied business for a long, 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 long time. I don't know many people. That's like when, you know, when, when Fred Smith started Federal Express in, in the late 70s, Paul. He, he yeah. didn't buy like two old Piper Cub planes and just try overnight mail delivery in Tennessee, Arkansas, and Kentucky. He bought multiple DC-9 jets, had to hire the pilots, the co-pilots. He, some planes were taking off with 10 letters at $25 a piece. I mean, he went all in. It turned out really well. Not everything does. The point is, if you're going to expect a big return, you've got to be able to put some chips into the front, into the middle of the table. So that's number one. Number two, you will earn significantly more income for who you are than what you do. I guarantee whether you're a copywriter, a CPA, a doctor, you know, whatever you are, or business coach, there are thousands of people who also do what you do. You have to set yourself apart. You have to stand out. One of the ways to do that is you want to be the author of, the creator of, and the founder of. Those three things will help set you apart, but you're going to earn more money more income for who you are, which speaks about your 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 celebrity profile within your niche than, than simply saying, I am the best CPA in the world. I can number, add numbers really, really, really so much better than these other thousand guys. You have <laughs> to be something much better than what you do. So those two things, I think. Oh, one more right. thing, if I may, just popped into my head. Um, yeah. I heard this analogy. I actually used this at my last event, which was now, good Lord, five years ago, I think. But you know, when you look at when you look at a field full of beautiful wild f flowers, Paul, maybe you're on the side of the highway, you just see them. What started out in that field was just dirt and a pack of seeds, and the seeds got pushed down in the dirt. So if you think the little seed had any feelings or, oh, my God, I'm in the dark. It's dark now. It's cold. It, it's icky. Oh, my God. The guy, the farmer comes around and starts turning the water on, and he's spraying water. Now he's cold. But every once in a while, it just it cracks the shell and sprouts, and then it kind of moves itself up, and it feels the sun, and then it takes off and grows. Every good thing starts as the seed of an idea. And most, almost anything that's worthwhile, you first, you're going to be in the mud for a while. If you're uncomfortable being in the mud, if you're uncomfortable losing Losing or or you know not having everything work out, I'd say keep your day job <laughs> because the only the only people that aren't aren't losing are people that aren't doing enough. Wow, everything worthwhile starts in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, tell me right. something that doesn't have some sort of pain. I mean, some sort of agony, pain. It goes through a period of crap. You know, my first 12 months in business was revenue free, as I like to say, which is a polite <laughs> way of saying it took me a year to get my first paying client. What if I had quit at month 10 or month 11? I'm like, oh, my God, I'm coming up in a year. I haven't got a client. Maybe I should go back and look for work again. Thank God I persevered. Well, we wouldn't be talking if you hadn't. So I'm glad you did. That's right. You wouldn't even know who I was. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, uh, the horticulture idea, you know, you prune plants. You take things away. There's a bit of pain there involved, and then and then they grow even better. That's uh, right. So it, and and there's a lot of metaphors like that in in the Bible that talk about uh, you know suffering and how how there's there's uh, uh, gosh what was I'm not I can't I'm at a loss for the word. But you know you prune when when you suffer you grow. That's right. And I know, and, and I know and, that you've you've had some suffering and you've grown from it. So, and, and, and we look, all have. people know and and expect. And appreciate that a doctor first goes to four years of school, then they go to however many medical years of schools, medical doctors. And I don't know if it's eight, nine, 10 years, and they might be $200,000 in debt, but now they're a doctor. Now they can earn 200, 300, four, whatever, if they're a specialist, if they're a heart specialist instead of a GP, maybe that's fine. So why do you think you can earn two or $300,000 just because you create a website and a fancy name? I mean, where's your where is your training where is your you know pushing your chips into the middle table and betting on yourself right right on well thank you jim uh, jim has a gift we're going to wrap up jim is offering a gift to to help help you take the next step to take your ordinary business into a dream business it's called the 10 day transformation to a dream business go to www 
www.getjimpalmer.com. That's www.getjimpalmer.com. And uh, get this free resource. Uh, I, I, know, I know it's going to be good. It's great stuff. Uh, it, it's awesome catching up with you, Jim. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And uh, look forward to uh, to seeing you again soon and uh, getting involved with uh, some more of your content. I know you've got a lot of stuff going on. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing about your next adventure. My pleasure, Paul. Great connecting with you again. And uh, congratulations on your podcast. I know it's going to be a great one. Okay. Well, thank you. There you have it from the dream biz coach himself, how to design the life and business of your dreams. That's all for now. And remember, faith and action go hand in hand. So put the pedal to the metal. And until next time on the Lead Machine Growth Show, I'm Paul Guyon. Thank you for tuning in to the Lead Machine Growth Show with Paul Guyon, where we show you how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream so that you can transform your vision into reality. Remember to visit our website at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com. And enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Lead Machine Growth Show.